Welcome to Missionary Roundtable with your host, Kale Horvath. Welcome to another episode of Missionary Roundtable. My name is Kale Horvath. I am a pastor and a missionary, and I'm also your host for today. Um, this is a different episode of the show because it is the season finale of this season of Missionary Roundtable, but it is also the first time that we've had an actual round table on this show. We've got multiple guests on the show today and I am excited to get into it. But first of all, thank you guys for listening to this podcast. This is the podcast where we talk about the Great Commission and international missions and how we can better seek to serve and God and to fulfill the Great Commission that he has given us. Make sure if you if you're just tuning in for the first time on this episode that you go back and listen to other episodes from this season and the first season of Missionary Roundtable. And you can glean some amazing insights and wisdom and advice from different men of God, different pastors and missionaries from all over the world who have shared their stories and and uh, advice on how to serve God um, by obeying the Great Commission and even serving in foreign and international missions. We have three guests on the show with me today, so a total of four people on the virtual roundtable uh, coming to you. Uh, I'm in Budapest, and they are in Decatur, Alabama, and so I'm going to introduce them uh, one at a time here. We have Pastor Jay Shug, uh, Pastor Joe McCaig, and Shane Wright. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. I'm super excited for this episode. Thanks for having us. Uh, good morning. It's great to be here. Good to be here. Um, today we're going to be doing uh, a different episode. I'm very excited for it because uh, none of these guys' names were in the title of the episode. The, the episode is all about a man whose name is Brandon Smith. And uh, so today we're going to be talking about the life and ministry of missionary Brandon Smith, um, who unfortunately passed unexpectedly and went home to be with the Lord earlier uh, this year. Uh, well, earlier last year, I'm sorry, July 2nd of 2020, uh, it's just 41 years old. Um, all of these guys, uh, were close friends of Brandon and, uh, and I'm excited to talk to them today just to honor his life and just, uh, have this episode as a memorial of his life, um, to talk about what he did and how he served the Lord and, um, also what we can learn and what we can glean from his life as well. Um, Jay Shug is pastor of Community Fellowship Baptist Church in Huntsville, Alabama. He's been there for 10 years. Joe McCaig is the pastor of Decatur Baptist Church in Decatur, Alabama. He's been there for over two years now. And Shane Wright is a member of Decatur Baptist Church. He's been there since he got saved in the 90s. And so I'm excited to have all these guys on here to talk about Brandon's life. And we're going to discuss his, his ministry as well. But guys, before we get into that, um, Let's just introduce who Brandon was to the audience. Um, we'll just go around the table. We can start with whoever wants to jump in. We'll just, you know, we can just popcorn this. Um, let's just talk about who Brandon was. Um, uh, each of you had a different relationship with him, right, and have different memories and experiences. So if you just want to you know, briefly discuss what your relationship with Brandon was, how you knew him, uh, maybe a fam- favorite memory with him. I guess I'll start. I I met Brandon in 2004. At the time, Jay and I were actually serving together, uh, leading a college career ministry here at Decatur Baptist Church, and and we were doing some uh, Friday night services actually that summer. And uh, someone invited Brandon, and and he came, and and that's what I was first introduced to him on a Friday night um, here at in what is now Holmes Chapel, and we were having college career services. And Brandon uh, immediately got very plugged in, committed, um, was very social. What I remember of those early days, my early memories of Brandon is he was, he was, uh, I wouldn't, he wasn't very serious. He was very social, a lot of fun, loved to hang out with his friends, but he very quickly became very faithful to to everything we were doing in that college career ministry. If we were, if we had a meeting, he was there. If we had a, if we were going somewhere, a beach retreat, a canoeing, whatever, he was all in, always there. If we were filming something silly, he'd do about anything we asked him to do. Um, just very, very committed, and um, and he very quickly began growing 
growing spiritually, um, got involved in discipleship. And then that was in 04. Then 05, he went on a mission trip, actually, with us. And Jay and I both were on that trip. We went to Albania. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll shut up a minute. Jay, do you do you remember any of that? What were your early memories? Yeah, no, it, it was uh, that was that was uh, his first mission trip. We actually were able to go and, uh, you know, see Jeff in Albania, see the ministry there. And uh, again, Brandon had only been at our church at that point a little over a year. Um, and, and I think was involved in discipleship at that point. Uh, and so, you know, it's just another opportunity uh, that God put in front of him to not only personally grow, but man, I think God used that mission trip to open his own eyes to missions because later on, and, and this comes later in the story, but when Le- when Brandon had the opportunity to surrender to a short-term project, um, man, he was, a, he was a guy that just basically stood up and, and put himself out there to be available. And uh, for us, you know, for Shane and I, we were even talking about this at breakfast, you know, we, we were blessed to be a part of a really cool ministry that God had his hand on. And we saw some amazing things, but, but to see a guy that man, he was newer to the ministry, uh, discipled first mission trip, and then have an opportunity to go on a two year mission project. uh, Shortly after that, it was kind of, I guess it was kind of not shocking, but it was, uh, I guess it was shocking, not, not because of his lack of wasn't because he wasn't capable or able, but it was just the fact that he was willing, you know? Uh, and that's a, that's a thing that I think through Brandon's story keeps showing up a theme through his story is just a willingness, uh, to take the next step. You know, he was always there. He was always, once he really started getting serious about his relationship with Christ, whatever was in front of him, it just seemed like he was willing to step through that door. And so that mission trip in 05, uh, it was a, it was an awesome trip, a lot of good memories from that. But I think that was probably one of the things that got used in his life to open his mind and heart to his own involvement in missions. You know, shortly shortly later, he would be on the mission field. Hmm. We were talking uh, earlier, if you go back and find some of those pictures from that trip, a lot of them, Brandon's like in the background. And it's really, I think, reflects a little bit about is reflective of who he was. And and at least my memory of him in those early days, you would have never picked him out of a line. Nobody would have picked him out of a lineup and said, this guy is going to be a missionary. Uh, He was again, not a lot of times, not very serious. And if he was in the back of that picture, he was probably gigging somebody or saying something comical or, or jabbing them, trying to make you smile or laugh. And he also didn't have, did not have, uh, which I appreciate this because I, I also struggle in this area. He did not have polished communication skills um, and, and and would have never felt, he never felt comfortable even years later standing up in front of a, a, a large group of people. Um, he, he was very comfortable behind the scenes mm-hmm. and, and just working with individuals or with really small groups of people. What did Brandon do uh, for a living b- before, you know, he, he got into the mission field? Did we mention that he wasn't really very serious? <laughs> <laughs> he, he worked a lot of odd jobs, worked construction. Some construction and just, it's just odd jobs and different things. He grew up here in this area in a very traditional family, a very serious faith of his family. His mom and dad are incredible believers, strong faith. I mean, just... Uh, really very, I mean, very, very serious. Although maybe in a traditional setting that you wouldn't have connected, I, just very serious about their faith uh, and the word of God. And he got saved early. And uh, I think out of high school, maybe had a little, uh, maybe some struggle with with some things he saw with some, uh, maybe not in his family, certainly, but just in Christianity that everything wasn't totally authentic. I think that's what drew him to Epic back in the day. I was the pastor of students here during that time. And uh, I think that's what drew him to Epic and to these guys was he saw an authenticity of their faith. It, it wasn't just an outward thing. Like um, maybe sometimes the, the Bible Belt Christianity kind of gets a bad rap for inauthenticness, of, like you say. Because it's kind of like yeah. a cultural thing that you grow up in a lot of times. Sure. 
Yeah, and he would have been in that kind of an environment where it's very cultural, but maybe not not very real. Uh, again, not in his family. His mom and dad are as <laughs> real as anybody's ever been yep. in their faith. Right. And and through all of this, man, it has just been manifest in such a, a fabulous way. Hmm. Uh, but so coming out of high school, you know, I think he, he was reeling a little bit with that. And then also with employment, he actually went down and worked on the Gulf Coast for a little while, probably got away from his faith uh, in that time, and, and God shook him. We're not even really sure how, but we know he did. Uh, he, he told me, I remember him telling me uh, later, uh, probably in the last year of his life, that while he was down there, he got up one morning and was sitting on the beach, and, and all of a sudden a fear came on him, and he was scared to death, and it was the fear of God, and and he and he felt like God told him you need to go home, and he, wow. he like within, if I remember the story right, within a day he packed up, told the people there, I'm going home. Right, wow. and that's probably due to praying parents. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to bet his mother started praying, put the fear of God in that boy, mm-hmm. uh, and and I I would that's how I would attribute that. I don't know exactly how all that happened, but he did come home then. So he's in his mid twenties by this point, mm-hmm. and that's when he he had come here in high school a little bit, visited with some friends, so he was aware of the church, attended and then another church college family. college age ministry, young adults kind yeah. of thing. And then, yeah, as, as a young adult, he came back and got connected and and got involved. But his his employment was was always a little sporadic, and, all over the place. Sure, yeah, <laughs> not not that he was unwilling to work. He he he's a hard worker. Mm-hmm. Uh, very committed guy, uh, just never really found that niche for him hmm. and wasn't a guy who was, who valued the things of this world right. highly. He, he truly was, God prepared him for the mission that he had for him. And he didn't value physical things, earthly things. He valued people and relationships. Right. Hmm. Uh, that was what was most important to him. And just the, the, the kind of guy he was, if he, he was going to put relationship over just about anything else. Hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, well, I, I met Brandon, um, man, just when my wife and I started deputation, uh, 2019, uh, the very first churches that we visited, we, we, our first tour, you know, kind of away from a home in Ohio was driving down South to visit a lot of you guys' churches. And, and, uh, it was at, uh, Jay's house. Um, I believe that, uh, Brandon was in town because he was a missionary to the Middle East. I don't know if we can say the country on here or not. So I'm going to leave that to you guys. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't want to jeopardize any future ministry or anything like that, but he was a, he was a missionary to a very hard, uh, to reach area of the world. And we'll just say the Middle East, um, for now, um, you, and I'll leave that to you guys to say anything further on that issue, but, um, he just happened to be home at, at the time, which is kind of interesting. And, you know, we'll get into those details later of even his passing, but, um, so it was kind of even lucky that I got to meet him. We were traveling, he was traveling. And so, but, but yeah, I feel like, and, and then I kind of follow, he, we followed each other for a little while on the deputation and support, uh, funding tour. So hit a bunch of the Southern. So I got to know him, uh, through some of that. And even he came back to, you know, my church in New Philly, Ohio, uh, for our conference. And so I feel like just over like a short, like six month time frame, got to spend a lot of time with Brandon. And, and I would agree. It just seems like he, uh, valued, um, uh, relationships. And like, I feel like I got to know him so well, just in a short time span, um, because he wasn't the guy who was like always trying to be in front of people, but like behind the scenes was just like authentic and, and willing to get to know whoever was around him, which was really cool. And, and I really valued that time getting to know Brandon. Yeah. One of the, one of the comment, just to add to those early days that carried through and that you, you witnessed it there. Brandon was very authentic he was very flawed. We all are incredibly flawed. He was very self-aware of that. And, and what Joe alluded to, I think he, a key part of his early growth was realizing, and, and he told some people this, that recognizing that authentic Christians that serve the Lord also experience problems and have issues and are also flawed and God can still use them. Amen. Yeah. I think that was key. key in his life and spiritual development. 
but it's also a key part of his story because he never, he never changed being authentic. He never started putting on a front as if he wasn't flawed. Right. He, he, yeah. he was transparent throughout. Yeah. Even as a missionary, and wherever you met Brandon, he was Brandon. That yes. can be, that's really hard to find. And especially in the missionary world, um, just because yeah. so many guys who maybe want to be authentic, but feel like they can't, um, right. you know what I mean? Just, you know, the, the way that funding and support raising works, they just feel like, well, I can't, I can't put all of me out there because we'll lose support. So it's, it's refreshing to find a guy like Brandon, who's, who's just him. I, I wouldn't say he's unfiltered. He's just him yeah. all the time. He's just real. He was very yeah. authentic and, and, and understood his limitations. And, and he, and he honestly, he paid the price for that in some areas. I mean, uh, I, you know, just physically and, and Brandon was okay with that, but you know, there were people who didn't understand him. There were people who didn't recognize the value of his calling hmm. and minimized that. Uh, and, and probably partly because he was just very straightforward and, and, and truthful and honest and, you know all the all the qualities we say we want, but but oftentimes we punish people for having. Hmm. Uh, but uh, he he was real. If yeah. he was anything, he was real and uh, and well prepared. God brought him down a very specific continuum and, and created him and and gifted him uh, for what He had for him to do. No doubt about it. Right. Well, let's uh, let's go down that road. Um, let's start to tell that story because Brandon was. Uh, raised in Alabama, uh, grew up in the South. Uh, maybe that's just a reason. I, he's just a reason I like him. He's just a blue collar, good old Southern boy, um, hard worker. But how does a good old Christian Southern boy from Alabama end up preaching Jesus in an Arabic country in the Middle East? Yeah, that's a that's a that's a great story, Jay. You probably know it as well as anybody. <laughs> well, the uh, yeah, and Brandon Brandon would tell you, uh, and we would agree, man. Uh, you know, it's just the Lord, and it's the grace of God on his life. And uh, I, I think going back to what we were saying earlier, he was just surrendered to do whatever the next thing was. And so he had an opportunity after a couple of years um, to go, you know, uh, on a on a two year mission trip project in that, in that Middle East area, uh, after going on a short-term mission trip, after, after, you know, being discipled, serving in ministry, serving on praise team, um, took a step of faith and surrendered to a short-term project, uh, in the Middle East in a, you know, Arabic speaking country. And, um, uh, again, Brandon, not being the, uh, prototypical missionary, if we, if we can say it like that, he's not the guy that, and sometimes our churches are in our minds that, hey, that's the obvious guy. But he surrendered and he went on this short term project and uh, and God used him mightily. As a matter of fact, he was partnering with other missionaries and other organizations in, in this country. And I had the privilege of visiting him um, while he was there toward the end of that two year project. And they were they were taking Bible stories and translating them into the native language and uh, just orally communicating the gospel and the word of God in an evangelistic effort to lead people to Christ. Uh, the, the country he was in was very restrictive of Christianity. It's illegal. You know, you can't openly share your faith. You can't have Bibles. And so he's a, he's in a difficult field, but his strength is relationships. And so, you know, he's been over there for almost two years. Uh, I had the privilege of going over and visiting with him uh, right at the end of that project. And, and again, he was working with some other American missionaries uh, at that time. What was interesting to me was when I got there and spent a week with him, the real missionary, and, and this is not to take away from the other guys or the ministry, but the guy that really had the impact uh, in the culture was Brandon hmm. uh, because his strength was relationships, because he wasn't the guy that had to be up front, because he had flaws and weaknesses, and yet you know God's grace was sufficient in his life. God was using him in a way that some of these other guys, man, they, they were, I hate to say it, but they were, they were kind of like the, the typical American missionary in the sense that, man, they go, they're trying to do ministry the American way. Mm. But the thing that they're missing is the, the relationship, the connection to the culture and the connection to the people. And Brandon actually was, was thriving in that. And so, you know, at the end of this two year project, you know, I came back and was able to kind of tell our church leadership and the guy that is really the missionary there is Brandon. I mean, I know he's there as a, 
as an intern and he's, he's part of a project, but man, the guy that really is connecting with people and is mastering the language and connects on a very personal level for the cause of Christ is Brandon. I mean, he's the guy that's there to learn, but he's the guy that actually is doing it wow. uh, in my, in my opinion, more effectively than even, you know, some other missionaries from other churches and organizations uh, that he was there partnering with. And so I think, I think that project at least for us, at least for me and, and for our church, man, it it solidified God can use God can use anybody that's willing. And and we have to, yeah, there are requirements and all the different things biblically that we have to keep in mind, but we have to we have to be open to the fact that God can use anybody uh, that just trusts him, that walks by faith, um, and that's willing to just follow the Lord. And that was kind of Brandon's thing, man. He the way he built relationships and the way that God gave him the language. I mean, again, he, he's a guy from <laughs> rural Alabama and, and uh, with no, I mean, I think he maybe went to college for like a year and uh, after a year of college, you know, some guys just aren't cut out for that. And Brandon, Brandon, that didn't fit his wheelhouse. And yet here's a guy that mastered fluently one of the hardest languages in the world uh not only to speak but he could read it he could write it um and so it was just you know it's just cool to see um a willingness and god's provision in his life and and just taking the next step that's in front of him and and using who god made him to be for the glory of god that that's what i see in his life that's how god prepared him i think uh and used him uh, eventually when he went back full time that one of my memories of that two year, he, it was at a missions conference that he made that two year commitment. He went forward in a missions conference here and said, Hey, I'm willing to do this and commit this two year commitment. But I think it's good to, to point out for, for listeners. He, he, um, about it was less than a year, maybe it was a year into that commitment. He was so frustrated with the leadership there. And perhaps it was, their ineffective, ineffectiveness, I don't know. They're in a, I don't know what exactly he saw all the details, but he was so frustrated. He, he, he begged God, let him come home. Hmm. And, but he was going to scripture and he, he said that every time he went to scripture, he just kept seeing confirmation that he needed to be there. And, <laughs> and in spite of his frustrations and his feelings at the time, um, even in years, I mean, in his spiritual growth, I mean, I don't think we would have said he was a uber mature Christian at this point, but he was obedient to scripture. Right. Mm -hmm. And he stayed. And, uh, which sounds like maturity to me. uh, Yeah, absolutely. Uh, good point. Compared to a lot of people I know who think they're mature. Right. Right. (laughs) And integrity. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, just integrity to do what, you said you were going to do number one and, and number two, what, what you think God is telling you to do. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of frustration. And, and it's also worth pointing out that he, he, he was in a place that he had to figure a lot of that out on his own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he was, he was out there on his own. So he, I don't think he had, he didn't have a support group in in the United States saying, well, you need to read the scripture and be obedient to that. I think that's just what he did. Yeah. The support group was within him. Yes. Uh, he was truly dependent on the Holy Spirit. And it, I, it, is, a, it is a miraculous thing. You, you said it. He went from a very small town, rural Alabama, to one of the most exotic parts of the world, speaking one of the most difficult languages, a culture that would be totally different. Sure. than anything he had ever grown up around. But he adapted to that culture. He, he saw people like God sees them. And he, he, he loved God enough to love who God loves and to adapt to the culture. He, he immersed himself in that culture in such a way that in the places that it would be most evident that you were an outsider, he was accepted and considered an insider wow. uh, and, and looked upon as, as a local. I mean, he became one of them. Cultural adaptability, I think, is one of the most important thing that, you know, the, the whatever the, the word is, but 
something that a missionary must do is adapt to the culture. And he seemingly did that flawlessly. Uh, maybe he didn't have all these other things going on, but uh, he adapted to the people. He loved the word of God. He loved the God of the word and was submissive. Uh, and, you know, man, that's a formula that God can work with, right? Yeah. Uh, amen. Just willing and able. Or not willing yeah. and able, willing and available, rather. Sorry, those, yeah, those right, were yeah. the two words I was looking for, because God's the yeah. one who makes us able. But yeah, he uh, still to this day is such an encouragement to me because, you know, sitting in a country with it with a difficult language, not not at the level of Arabic, but but difficult, especially for an American who's a a one a monolinguist, <laughs> so to say. <laughs> um, and there's just frustrating days where you're studying grammar and you're just like smacking yourself in the head saying, I can't do this. Um, but just uh, in the short conversations I had with Brandon about language and just knowing, and I don't mean this in a in a mean way or a facetious way at all, but knowing that a, a, a guy from rural Alabama, because he loved the Lord and, and was willing to stick it out, could learn Arabic, <laughs> how to speak and sound like it, like an Arab, a, a man who speaks Arabic, um, that, that just encourages me to press on, man. I mean, that still to this day, even after his passing, he's, he's encouraging me as a missionary. Mm -hmm. So uh, praise the Lord for his willingness and his availableness. So after the one, after the two year commitment, he, he, after the two year commitment, he came, uh, he came back to the States obviously, but within a year he was back in, he oh, was wow. committed. So he, he had finished that short term, but then he, when he came back, he was so, he was so convinced that that's where God called him to. He was back there, not under some other organization. He was back there on his own, on his own <laughs> figuring it out for his own, mainly just doing relational ministry. Mm. And 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 he would not, and Joe has said this, and he said it better than I'll say it, but he didn't build relationships to win people to the gospel to be able to say, I've won a dozen. He built relationships because he loved people, right. because he and because he loved people, he wanted to see them come to Christ right. because he didn't want them to live <laughs> eternally uh, separated from God. The way we said it is he he didn't build relationships to share the gospel. He shared the gospel because he built relationships. Mm. And people weren't projects to Brandon. And we get so messed up with that where right. people become a project rather than just. And again, I think, it, you know, at the deepest level, he loved God. So he loved who God loves. And so he loved people. And, and then he, he wanted to build relationships with them. And, and they were, you know, in the place that he was, it wasn't, there's not a large ministry going to happen. It's not open. Uh, it's, it's, it's underground and it's through relationships and they're long-term relationships. Yeah. And Brandon, when he passed, had relationships that he had been working on for years and years and years. One of the things his parents, again, the most godly people I think I know wanted to, was to make sure that we, we, we were able to stream his, his service so that they could be a part of that. And one more chance to hear the gospel right. wow. because Brandon had invested so many years in, and loved them genuinely. Uh, mm. And he, he just was, um, he just was that kind of guy that yeah. very real, very genuine uh, well, and because he was so authentic, being obedient to the Lord. Yeah, it, it enabled him. It sounds like to build authentic relationships. Because, I mean, I know people are people anywhere, but I would imagine, especially in a place like the Middle East, people would be sensitive to snuffing out ulterior motives. Um, right. Es especially a foreigner trying to build a relationship with you. Right. Um, so I mean. It sounds like, like you said, you kind of alluded to this earlier in the conversation that God uniquely gifted him, just even in his personality, to be able to serve in that context. Absolutely, and it's so cool to see somebody take that. And 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 again, I, I think the one of the unique things about Brandon was he he didn't try to fit the mold. He stayed true to himself. He he found God's mission for his life. And even though he wasn't encouraged strongly, he didn't have people from an outside influence encouraging him and propelling him forward. He continued to go forward in obedience to that calling, even in the midst of uh, 
even I, I would say even discouragement, the, the, the lack of encouragement or, or and at times discouragement, people telling him he should not do this. Mm. Uh, but he stayed true to the calling uh, and, and, and with minimal resources, both uh, that being both leadership, and, uh, but, but also financial, uh, just, just the lack of encouragement. Uh, and a lot of us feel bad about that, uh, that, you know, feel like, man, I could have, I could have done more. Uh, but just, um, just was a guy who stayed true to who God called him to be and, and was so firmly convinced of that. But he he stayed in it uh, regardless of what the obstacle was. And um, how long did he serve there before he passed? Ten years. Ten years. Yeah. If you count, if you, if you count that, so he went in 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 uh, 2007 originally for that original two year commitment, mm -hmm. right. and then he came back in 09 and then was back there a year later. So I mean, it's if you count it all together, yeah, it's, it's, it's over ten years. Ten, yeah, 10 years. years. Wow. Yeah, more like 12, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, and really, he, just, he devoted, yeah, I mean, a, a large chunk of his adult life into that yeah. country. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And just, was there, and there on his own, really, a lot of it, just figuring it out, just figuring out who can I minister, ministering to street children, just sees a need that yeah. they're street children, and, and he starts ministering to them, you know, and meeting those needs, and uh, meeting, building relationships, and starting discipleship, and... And, and ministering to street children and who's participating with him in that ministry his lost friends right, <laughs> right. he is brought along his lost friends are helping him minister to street children wow. again Amen. it's all about those authentic relationships hmm. and and to add to what joe said what's so amazing to look back now god he was perfect for that culture yeah for that, what God called him to do, none of us recognized it. Hmm. I say none of us. Maybe that's when Jay went and witnessed it personally. I, he was the first one that I ever heard verbalize it, that it was a good fit. But for the most part, totally unrecognizable by us as leadership, how perfect, how God did this hmm. until it was very late. Uh, not not necessarily at his passing, but, you know, very late in the sure. process. So we as leaders... There's a learning there. Sure. That, that somebody there that doesn't necessarily fit the mold, or maybe God's doing something, his mm -hmm. ways are beyond our ways. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. God yeah. Did, this is a case where God did something and, and we didn't even see it. And it would have been real easy for Brandon to get discouraged by that and not continue forward. If he had listened to people, he would have he would be here working a construction or would have been here working a construction yeah, right. job sure. most of his adult life rather than in that. Middle Eastern culture impacting lives for eternity. Hmm. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And that's a lesson for me as a pastor to learn that, you know, we, we better not put God in our box. Yeah. Uh, just because a guy may not be the most eloquent speaker and comfortable in front of a crowd, there are parts of the world where you're not permitted to gather a crowd. Hmm. And, 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 if, and those who are listening that maybe, you know, feel like God's doing something in their life and that's not their their skill set, realizing that that doesn't mean God's not going to use you. There's lots of parts of the world and places in ministry that, man, we need that. We need that gifting. That's why God gave it to you. That's the reason God made you like he is. He has a place in the kingdom for you to serve and find that place and be as tenacious about it as Brandon was, regardless of what. I'm not suggesting that people should be out of line with their you know, rebellious to their church leadership. Don't get that, but uh, but be tenacious about it and stay after it and, and all those opportunities uh, and take them. Concerning submerging, submerging himself in the culture, I wanted to, to mention too, because I think it's so neat. He was so submersed in the culture. He went into a mosque during Ramadan <laughs> and and was able to do that and, and, and nobody knew. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Nobody, he just wanted to see what was going on in there. And he went in with his friends and yeah. he just blended in. Yeah. Yeah. He, com he completely, he, he was not in, in, and I think, I think it just speaks to, you know, again, the, the grace of God on his life and his ability to build relationships. He wasn't considered, uh, he got to the point in his ministry and, and with the people that he knew, he wasn't an outsider. He fit in, he, he got to the point in his, in his ministry and his relationships that he wasn't an outsider in that context, uh, in that country, in the middle East, he, 
he was completely accepted. And I think they, they didn't view him as an outsider. They didn't view him as an American. They knew he was a Christian. He's very open with his faith, with, with the people he had relationships with. But he also, he also knew that, you know, that they needed to come to Christ in, in their timing and their understanding. He, he, he didn't forsake the relationship. And I mean, even in his story, I mean, there's guys that he would meet with for months on end uh, to share the gospel with and to, and to explain in detail the difference between uh, the gospel and other religious beliefs in their country. And I mean, it was just a long game, but, but he was accepted as a, as an insider, man. He was completely, uh, yeah, he, he just belonged there. I mean, it's just the way God made him for sure. <laughs> That's perfectly, awesome. perfectly fit for that ministry. Yeah. And it definitely takes a special um, personality to, to be able to thrive in that, in that context, because, well, I, I can just say arriving in Hungary and in the pandemic and the weird timing in the world, we weren't able to go to church for five months. Um, that's the first time I think in my life since being born that I didn't go to church for five months and I just, cause we couldn't, there was nothing open, couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't have more than 10 people in your house. And we watched our home church online, which was cool. You know, you couldn't do that 10 years ago. Um, but just even, you know, the, the amount of, uh, I don't know, you just, sometimes you just felt down spiritually. You just can't fellowship with the, with with the other brothers and sisters in Christ. And you really see how important church is, but, but man, in a context like that, you're not meeting with a bunch of people on Sundays. It, everything is underground. It's all one-on-one. Um, so to be able to take someone, it, it just takes someone special um, to be able to thrive in that kind of context. And I was going to ask you guys, what what is it that makes someone special to do that? But I think we've been describing that the entire episode about Brandon, just willing, available, and, and the fact that he didn't need to be um, the person in front you know, in getting all the, the the accolades or anything like that, being willing to just work behind the scenes, it may, maybe we can just sum that up with humility. Yes, yeah, absolutely. He would. He was not comfortable with accolades. Hmm. Very humble. And I was, yeah. And, and and part of it, I was thinking about that this morning as we were talking at breakfast, and never actually made the point. But humility is something that that I've been studying lately, and, and planning to speak on it at, at an event and. It struck me that that was really a quality that Brandon had in that he was willing to attempt, he was willing to step out and do what God asked him to do without fear of failure, partially because he was humble. Mm -hmm. It, It wasn't about him. It wasn't about him looking bad or him being a failure. He, he truly, was willing to just be obedient to the Lord. It was about God's glory, not his. He did what he did in God's power and God's strength and uh, was very comfortable in, in his own skin and, and with his flaws, uh, not, you know, not excusing anything, but just realizing who he is. He, he remembered his frame as the Lord does, that he was but dust and, and was willing to step out and, and be obedient. And, and that is humility. Even, even, Though I may look like, end up looking less than stellar, I'm willing to do this anyway. Even even getting up in front and trying to, you know, raising support as a missionary, you know, it's difficult, sure. uh, especially if you're not comfortable in front of a crowd. Yeah. And we Americans really do like, you know, for people to entertain us uh, and be quality speakers and have a polished presentation. Uh, that's that's how we judge people. Although it may have nothing to do with them accomplishing the mission. Uh, and so, but Brandon was willing to do all of that in order to fulfill what God had called him to do. And I I do think humility is a great way to describe that. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And especially considering, man, what, uh, maybe, maybe this is just a Western mindset and especially a Western Laodicean church mindset, but just our definition of success, you know what I mean? In ministry. And, and that even kind of leads guys who are missionaries, you know, their definition of success, whether it's, you know, written down somewhere or just what they portray it to be in their own minds. Um, maybe that's why so many guys wouldn't go to a 1040 window country or the Middle East just because like, what is success? Well, if success is building a, a thousand person church or planting 20 churches in five years or something, you're not going to do that there. And so, right. I mean, we know, you know, the only mention of success in the Bible is Joshua 1.8. Um, but, but really, if you guys want to just talk about a little bit, like what, what is successful 
missions or successful ministry work on the foreign field and and why why was Brandon a success even though maybe that doesn't match our western picture or definition of success well i think i think if you look at his ministry and the fruit of his ministry again you have to you have to discern with what set of eyes you want to view that through and if it's if it's mass numbers of conversions, if it's multiple buildings and church plants and all those different things, you know, the truth is uh, there, there wasn't that. Um, but what there was, was an investment uh, of, of a guy's life into the lives of other people uh, for the gospel's sake. And, and again, it's just an obedient, to me, it's just an obedience to do what God's called you to do. And so, you know, success for, when I look at Brandon's life, uh, you know, he's a, he's a hero in, in my opinion, Absolutely. Uh, just because he was faithful and, you know, he just did what God called him to do. And, and he walked in the comfort of that and the peace of that. And, and he knew that what he was doing mattered, uh, because it mattered to God. We said that earlier, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, people matter to God. And so, you know, he, he was willing to invest his life in those relationships. And man, he prayed, you know, he prayed for people to get saved. I mean, he, he was an emotional guy. And when you started talking about some of the the guys that he had friendships with and relationships with, man, when he was stateside, he would be very honest, man, this guy's not saved yet. And I've been praying for years for this guy. And of course, in that culture, you know, again, they're so relational. I mean, he's in the States and he's getting WhatsApp calls uh, from these guys and and Facebook messenger calls and, you know, they're speaking Arabic and he puts it on speakerphone so I can hear it, but it doesn't make sense. You know, it's just, you know, it's, but man, he's, when he gets off the call with these guys, man, his heart is just moved because he has such a burden, uh, you know, for them and for their eternity. And um, man, uh, the, the dude was just legit. Uh, and so I, I think just success was, man, he was obedient to what God called him to do. Yeah. He loved, he loved God. He loved people. And, uh, I think that's a fair definition of success. He figured out what God wanted him to do and he did it with all his heart. With all his heart. I was just thinking the same thing. He sold out to it. Amen. <laughs> in the, in the face, again, I cannot, I can't minimize the fact that he did it in the face of <laughs> discouragement and, uh, and minimal support. Uh, he just, he just was that convinced of what God had called him to do. And he did it. Let's talk a little bit about his support. I think that's interesting because it, it, it illustrates what you're talking about. And it also is a little different. Branding had support, what I'd call traditional support from some churches, but from my view, and you guys speak up if you disagree, he had more than normal a more than normal percentage of his support was from a individuals, a large, and again, that, that shows that relational thing where individuals, uh, individual families, individual people would, would support him for 50 or a hundred dollars a month or whatever. And then B from working because Mm -hmm. he, he, he just, Got a job. Well, he didn't have jobs here. He had a job in Morocco. He had jobs in Morocco. (laughs) Yeah. So you ask, what did he do? (laughs) That that country boy. He taught English. He taught English. (laughs) (laughs) So there's a lot of people in that part of the world that are speaking with a little Southern accent. (laughs) Alabama accent over in the Middle East. (laughs) Oh, man. Praise the Lord. But that that is so awesome, though. The I, I, I love that. Just a simple definition of what is success. Just obeying what God told you to do. Because, man, I don't know about you guys, especially now just with the post-COVID world that we're getting ready to live in and the events of the last two years and, you know, a lot more of us, you know, Bible-believing Christians looking towards the skies and wondering if the time is drawing nigh. Um, I just think about the judgment seat more now than I used to. Um, and I mean, shame on me, but I just do. It's just a practical part of daily life now. And and, and really, I've, I've had that same thought here, even since getting on 
too hungry. You know, maybe even my perspectives and goals have changed since, you know, when, before I started deputation to now with COVID in between is like, you know what? I, when I get to the judgment seat, I just want to be able to look the Lord in the eye and say, got it. I, I just, I did what you asked me to do. I tried. I was obedient. It may not have been the biggest, sexiest ministry that ever happened, but I, you told me to do this and I was obedient and, and man, maybe, maybe that's one of the biggest things we can take away. I was going to ask you guys, what can we all just as Christians, pastors, missionaries, lay people, what, what have you, what can we learn from Brandon's life to make us better Christians and servants of God? But maybe that's it. Just find what God told you to do and just do it with all your heart. Regardless of the results, leave the results to God. Right. And that's, that's very difficult in, I think in any ministry, but as a pastor in America, Mm. you know, we are all up in, uh, numbers and buildings and all those things and and just staying true to who god called us to be true to his word not getting distracted by the shiny things that would pull us away and i I think that that's a wonderful takeaway from brandon's life yeah that and you don't have to be a super christian to be used of god yeah yeah he's definitely not a God uses ordinary people. Yeah, he's an ordinary person. Yeah. And, and we're all really ordinary, but we some of us like to think more of ourselves than that. Right? Right. It's just and, very transparent. Well, and we also put people on pedestals. And, and again, sure. we're guilty sure. of doing that ourselves as pastors, putting sure. a level, sure. a standard there that says, you've got to be this or that. You've got to fit this mold in order for God to do something significant with your life. Mm. And that's just not true because God puts us in the body puts us in the body where he wants us and, and he gifts us to meet those needs in the body. And Brandon, uh, I think had a great grasp on that, mm-hmm. uh, and, and lived that out. Um, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's important as a, as a pastor now, you know, for, for me having the opportunity to, to be a pastor and, and have the privilege and responsibility to, to lead others, man, it, it, you know, Brandon, my prayer is that there's Brandon's in my church. You know, yeah. that yeah. Um, that we that we as leadership, we as pastors just trust the Lord enough to to realize that, man, there's there's people God wants to use God. There's people that God wants to use within our congregations um, that are willing uh, to just take the next step and to trust the Lord. And, and we we need to be a support system uh, for them and give them the opportunity you know, to serve locally, but then also trust the Lord to, to call those people out, man. And to, as, as we have time, if we have a little bit of time left, man, let's get people that are willing and available and trained, of course, but uh, they don't have to be perfect, but they, yeah, let's see the value. Yeah. Let's value every part of the body. Um, you know, that person who you may think has nothing on the ball. That's right. That's that they are a candidate for God to use them greatly. That's right. Yeah. And God, right. And God gets said, the glory. Not many wise. Yeah. God gets the glory know, out of yeah. all that. And I think first Corinthians 12, you know, the, even the, yeah. the uncomely parts and I'm certainly not calling Brandon an uncomely part, but maybe there's people out there who feel like they are. Um, sure. you know I mean, like God can't use me. I'm not, I'm not a mouth. I'm not an eye. I'm not a hand. I'm a, a spleen. Right. Or something, right. and it's like you know what? There's yeah. there's a purpose for spleens, and God, right. if you'll if you'll you can make God, it without your hand, but you might not make it without your spleen, right? <laughs> sure, sure. They're, yeah, they're they're more important. They're the they're more comely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I d- I don't want to dwell here, um, but I think even just for the purpose of this podcast, even just to mention, um, because I think I not to put a sad overtone to this, um, but but Brandon did pass away unexpectedly, but I do think that it kind of ties a bow on what we've been talking about here about being obedient to what God called you to do because Brandon was was home for a short time fundraising um, most of the time he wasn't in the states most of the time he was you know across the world serving and he was home for a short time for a period of months and um, and he passed away unexpectedly and I, I don't know if there's more knowledge today than there was back then but when I heard the news we we didn't know why he passed medically and um and so for me, not knowing why God called him home that early um, is difficult. I mean, I remember just hearing the news and even, I mean, I, I felt weird just because I was so uh, torn up about it. Like, it's not like I knew him as long as you guys did, but just being able to get close to him, like on the, you know, on the deputation trail, when I heard that news, I was just like laying in bed um, 
and just tearing up. And I, and I just called Jay and I'm like, maybe this is bad because Jay is close and maybe he's having a hard time right now, but I don't know who else to call to find out what's going on. And, and, uh, I just remember Jay saying, we don't know, we don't know what happened and this is what happened. And he just, he went to sleep and he didn't wake up, but, but I feel like, <laughs> and maybe, maybe not a lot of Laodicean Christians get to meet the Lord this way, but, um, but Brandon, I feel like Brandon got to meet the Lord on a good level. <laughs> like he was in the middle of yeah. doing what God told him to do. He wasn't, he wasn't wayward. Right. He did, he didn't have to be like, Oh man, right. I, I wish I would have been doing what you told me to do. Like, and you know, since life is a vapor, maybe we can take something away from that of Brandon's life too, because we aren't guaranteed tomorrow, whether it's rapture or whether our, our life ends prematurely. Yeah. That's a good point. He, he came back here in 2019 and uh, probably worth mentioning for whatever reason, when he left uh, the country to come back to the States that time, he gave everything he had away. And, uh, he, I think he came back with a backpack and a couple of changes of clothes. That's it. Yeah. And, uh, his, his, he had a girl here that he dated. And, and so there was a picture of Brandon and, and she literally said, well, I'm glad he was wearing that shirt, not the other one. <laughs> I mean, literally, the guy had two shirts. Yeah. Uh, he just wasn't you know, living just, for this world, man. He was not living for this world. You know, even when he left back in the day when he left, his dad had his, his, his affluent family. His dad had brought him a new truck, you know, and everything. And, and you know, and so, you know, he's a young guy and his dad's helping him out. And, and, he, and he, he, he cared nothing about that new truck. He, you know, yeah, man, do something with that thing. I'm going to, I'm going to serve. I'm going to do what God's called me to do. And, and the same thing, and he, and he closed he, out that way too. That's all. Awesome. Closed out that way, absolutely. Yeah. And then when he came back here, he got stuck here because of the pandemic, right? right. Mm-hmm. And he wound up staying here a lot longer. You know, we've talked a lot about him being faithful and about him um, uh, being, you know, a, a missionary. Um, and, and Jay will will add to this, I'm sure. But while he was here and stuck here, he didn't just sit at the house. No. I was in the middle of what was a very difficult personal um, construction project. I'll call it that. And I, I, what looking looking back, I know it wasn't exactly like this, but it seems like for a year, every weekend, he was with me, yeah. doing construction, and and he would he would be there when I got there, and he would be there till I left, yeah. and. Yes, he was faithful to the Lord. Yes, he was a missionary and, and, and an example, but I'll always remember Brandon as a friend. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The same, same for, you know, when, when he was here during that year and trying to get back to the mission field and, you know, just the challenges with COVID and stuff like that. He, when he wasn't with Shane on the weekend, he, he was with me during the week in Huntsville a good bit. And uh, we, we kind of, at our church, we kind of used the COVID um, the COVID um, shutdown to do some maintenance on our building and, and expand some children's area. And man, every week, uh, Brandon would come and, uh, you know, usually we would work on Tuesdays and Thursdays, sometimes on Wednesdays. And, and I mean, he was just there every, I mean, literally every week. I mean, every week he would come and help. And, and he just wanted, to, it wasn't that he, he just wanted to be with you. You know, he, he just valued you as a friend and, uh, he wanted to be with you and whatever you were doing, uh, it didn't matter, man. If you were, if you're putting down carpet, if you're changing out ceiling tile, if you were, you know, putting up sheetrock, whatever, he just wanted to be with you, you know? And, uh, and so we got to spend a lot of time together, um, during that time. And, man, it was just, his heart was to be back where God had called him. Um, but while he was here, man, he, he valued, um, he valued the relationships that he had and it was always, it was always just good to spend time with him yeah. and eat, eat crazy things and talk about crazy things. And just, uh, he was just a, he was just a blessing to be around for sure. We had a lot of fun yeah. together. I think it's fair to say too, that, you know, Brandon, that we don't know what happened. We don't know what the medical cause for his passing was because his mom and dad, uh, Burgess and Angie Smith, who adopted Brandon, uh, when he was four months old, uh, invested in him. Brandon, 
obviously the Lord gets the credit, but but Brandon was the man he was because of, of Burgess and Angie Smith. Yeah, amen. Um, and when he passed, their faith never wavered. Hmm. He, he was their only child, adopted child. I, you know, I just think about what would have happened in Brandon's life if he'd ended up somewhere else. Uh, but God put him there with them. They raised him to know God. Uh, they had a faith that was unwavering. Uh, they 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 were a critical part. I mean, obviously, they they made him who he, God used them to make him who he was. Uh, and uh, and they continue to this day to trust the Lord and just believe that you know that was His plan and purpose. And they're looking forward to eternity uh, when we'll see Brandon again. But uh, you know. It, we 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 talked about it this morning at breakfast. I, I still struggle. A guy who <laughs> went from North Alabama to one of the most difficult parts of the world, integrated, learned the language, and was effective. God, what what in the world? I don't understand it. But I've asked that question more than his parents have. I think you know, mm-hmm. just they've been full of faith through wow. all of this. And that's uh, incredible. We don't know exactly. Uh, I think James DeCoker, one of our fellow pastors, said it best. When the game is over, and uh, there's but there's still time on the clock, a good coach pulls the, the the starters out and lets them get a round of applause on the way out, uh, just for somebody to recognize their effort. Hmm. And uh, I feel like that's what happened with Brandon. Was hmm. we're we're at the end of this thing, uh, the game's over. He pulled a starter and. Uh, He's letting the subs play out the rest of the game just so that we could give him a round of applause on the way out. Yeah. Oh, amen. You know what? Um, you mentioned earlier, um, we were just talking about that not always the people that we envision as being the, the best and the brightest and are necessarily who God uses. Um, one, because he gets the glory from not using those people. But two, I feel like half the time is just because they aren't willing and available <laughs> for God to right. use them. Um, right. But, you know, it, it just reminded me when you guys were talking about that earlier, Hebrews 11 and the Hall of Faith and uh, how many names are on that. Now, you know, to us, we read them in the Bible and they're like patriarchs of the faith. But, I mean, you've got murderers on that list. You've got a right. uh, prostitute on that list and all these people. But right. God saw them as heroes of the faith. And, you know, I, I I don't have my own Hebrews 11 per se, but, I you know, if I did, my Mount Rushmore of the faith, I mean, Brandon certainly would be on my list just from— uh, mm-hmm. how submitted he was and obedient and, and humble. Um, just some amazing attributes uh, from his life. Um, as we conclude this and, and wrap this up, and I, I just do want to thank you guys, you know, before we do just for doing this and being willing to to rehash those memories so that other people can hear it um, and hopefully be encouraged and inspired by his story. Um, Joe, I, I know that your church, uh, Decatur Baptist Church, um, who was his sending church, um, is doing uh, is doing is putting together something special uh, in a memorial of his life and for other people who want to be used of God. Would you like to uh, share about that? Yeah, uh, just uh, well, we you know we thought about Brandon and his influence and and just ways that we could uh, possibly continue that you know and just his legacy would go forward. Uh, so we, we we came up with the idea of just uh, a scholarship. Uh, for short term. So Brandon went as, as a short term missionary, a two year project. Uh, and so uh, we started raising funds to, uh, to provide scholarships for young people who, who might want to do that, you know, and go and, and serve as a, an intern, uh, as a missionary that, that God could call them up and use them as well. And so we did that last year. Uh, man, people have been super generous about forty five thousand dollars has been raised oh, wow. uh, we've Crazy. awarded a couple of scholarships so far so there's a couple now on the field hmm. on a short-term uh, project and there'll be another guy in fact this Sunday we'll be awarding the second one hmm. uh, of a young man that's going uh, for a short-term project but there's a lot of resources there if anybody who's listening feels like the Lord's leading them and they would like to uh, apply for that scholarship, Probably the best way to do that is just email me. My name, my email is Joe McCag at DecaturBaptist.org, or they could go to our website and pull that off at DecaturBaptist.org. But, I'll link it in the show notes as well. Yeah, excellent. We, we would love to entertain that, and uh, the goal is just to see more young people get on the field. Hmm. Uh, and 
And, and, and the idea of the short-term thing is just like with Brandon, you know, he, he wasn't really sure. He just saw an opportunity, stepped out in faith and took it. And from that, God did great things in his life. Uh, and, and we would love to see more young people have that opportunity and, and invest in them in Brandon's name, mm. uh, for sure. Amen. Especially in those Middle Eastern parts of the world. If, you know, sure. we would love to put an emphasis there, especially. Yeah. Awesome. Well, guys, uh, let's just take this second and go around the table. Any final thoughts or any th- last things you want to say just about Brandon or, or what his life ministry uh, can mean to those who are listening, I- especially those who maybe had never met Brandon, never heard of him until right now? Well, f- first, thanks, Kel, for doing this. Thanks yes. for the opportunity to, to put this out there, to put out Brandon's story, one, uh, but also to promote that scholarship and, and to get it to more people. Uh, we're honored that you you thought of this and would be willing to share his story. Uh, I, I do think that Brandon is a model, uh, an example. He would never see himself as that, uh, and that's why he is one. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we're, we just appreciate the opportunity to share the story. Yeah, very well said. Amen. All right, well, thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, that was great. Thanks, Kel. Brandon Smith, uh, you guys heard it. Was a missionary, um, certainly a Christian, um, but also a, a friend and a servant and humble um, and just a model for what a Christian should be um, obedient to what God called him and asked him to do even up to the end. And so, man, guys, uh, I don't really feel like I have much to add there, but life is a vapor. Um, you don't know how many days you have left. And, uh, you know, whether that's in regards to the end of our physical lives or just the Lord calling us home at the rapture of the church. But let's just get busy doing what God asks us to do. Find out what God asked you to do and be obedient and do that thing. You may not think that you are prepared. Well, God can qualify you. God can prepare you if you'll just let him, if you'll just get plugged into your church and get plugged in and let him use you and seek to grow and get discipled. And so that's my prayer for anyone listening to this. Uh, that they would be inspired by Brandon's life, that regardless of your talents, your what you think are your abilities, God wants to use you and God can use you and be glorified by using you as a vessel to pour out into other people's lives. And so I hope that as the days are short that we can gain that um, and just be inspired uh, by the life of Brandon Smith. Uh, You guys also heard about the Brandon Smith Memorial Scholarship Fund. If that's something you'd be interested in giving to or something you'd be interested in applying for, uh, maybe you're interested in or are going on a missions trip or a short-term missions project, um, that's something you can apply for. Um, You can get more information about that by uh, checking out – I'll have a link in the description of this episode, um, but by going to uh, Decatur Baptist Church's website, there will be a link you can click on. You can find more information there, and you can email Pastor Joe McCaig for more information about it as well. Make sure you do that. That's something that they've set up in honor of Brandon and are excited to see more people go to the field through it. But this is the season finale, like I said at the beginning of this episode, the season finale of uh, this season of Missionary Roundtable this summer. Uh, there is two full seasons, so if you somehow just jumped into this show right now, you can go back and listen to this season and the season before it that happened last year. Um, I don't know if there will be another season. It's just something that uh, happened the last two summers, and you know, if God willing, if we're still here, and, and I've got time next year in the spring, uh, to, to put together some more interviews with other friends and missionaries, then, then we'll do that. But for now, I hope you can gain encouragement, inspiration, and information even about missions and global missions and the Great Commission just from uh, these episodes. I hope that they've been an encouragement to you. And so uh, I hope you guys had a good summer. And God willing, we'll see you next time. For all of you who have been listening to this podcast, thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Um, I'll see you all next time. God bless. Thanks for listening. Please rate and subscribe and share us on social media. Also, please make sure to check out our other podcast, Theology Roundtable, at theologyroundtable.com.